Hi, and welcome to Answers News for April 26, 2021. I'm Georgia Purdom here with Ken Ham and Bodie Hodge. Hello. Um, I'm going to give a shout out, first of all, to my husband, um, Chris. It's his birthday today, and this is his last year before he turns half a century old. Nice. So. Happy birthday, hon. Uh, so we have a wonderful <laughs> studio audience with us today. So make yourselves known. Let's hear you. Come on. Let's hear it. There are thousands of people here again today. <laughs> uh, so, and they're from everywhere except Kentucky. <laughs> or, from all sorts of different states. So I'm going to follow along on uh, my Facebook here. And if we can... Uh, and so if we can mention some of the comments, we will, the first person is from Switzerland. Look at that. That's cool. There we are. So, okay, so this is the A team because we actually started Answers News, the three of us. Now we have others that get involved. We do this on Mondays and Wednesdays. Right, at two. Uh, but Dr. Georgia Purdom is our, she's our token scientist on this panel today because <laughs> she, she has a PhD in molecular genetics from Ohio State. And uh, so then uh, we're going to make. Just a couple of announcements, first yeah. of all. So, Georgia, tell us about the high school labs. We actually have a science lab here at the Creation Museum, and we'll have one, well, it's on the lower level of the Answer Centre mm -hmm. at the Ark, and we um, will have that operating probably by fall, yeah. and certainly programs by next year. So. Yes, yes. So, um, these, uh, the labs that we'll be offering right now for next year, for next school year, um, starting this fall here at the museum. So, we offer these for, um, specifically for homeschool students. Sometimes we also have Christian schools, but mainly for homeschool students to come in and be able to get their lab experience. So it's 12 uh, four-hour sessions throughout the school year. And we offer four labs now starting this uh, fall will be earth science, physical science, and then forensic science, biology, and chemistry. So professional instruction, um, as well as amazing lab equipment and a very collaborative environment. And so we really encourage people to take advantage of it's that. It's hands-on. It really is good. Good. Yeah. And then once we get the lab open down at the answer center, the lower have, level has right. 48 students can be in there at a time. Right. Teacher, and it's going to be, it's really high tech. It is. And it is. Also, then you'll be able to do intensives. We're so hoping, yes, next summer to be offering intensives so that students could come maybe from further away for like a week or two and get their entire lab uh, for the year um, in whatever topic done, basically completed. So. So we yeah. want to really help parents to be raising up generations with a truly Christian worldview. So there are parents that would come out from California and stay mm -hmm. for a week and their kids can go to yeah, these lab intensive. Lives, yeah. Yeah. And then most people I've talked to from California say they don't want to go back. <laughs> well, so I don't anyone like from California here today <laughs> in our studio audience? Oh, yeah, are you going us, huh? back? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> yes, you heard that, right? So anyway. Yeah. Do you have to get a uh, California passport to get back in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, we had um, a family that enrolled their kids in 12 Stones Christian Academy who mm -hmm. moved here from California yeah. because they for want their reason. kids to go to a truly mm -hmm. biblical worldview Christian school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have one called 12 Stones Christian Academy. Okay, tell us about Creation College, Georgia. Okay, so Creation College Expo, um, we have that every November. And basically, it's colleges that have signed um, or agree with Answers in Genesis on our, um, our tenets of creation, our statement of faith, that we they teach from a truly biblical worldview beginning in Genesis. And so we have a Creation College list. And so those that are on the list come to the Expo. So it's a great way for your, for your upcoming coming college student um, to be able to be exposed to all these different institutions at one time. And we also have special speaking and other things that go on as well uh, during that. It's a three-day Actually, event. those colleges that actually come to that expo say it is their best recruiting mm -hmm. uh, uh, means that they have because if, if they go to other conferences, you think you have this many people, right? And then their clientele is a small fraction of that. Whereas when they come to Creation College, we have a couple of thousand right. students come and their clientele is everyone yeah. uh, mm -hmm. because they're coming because they want a college that takes a stand right. on God's word. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's very, um, very great. It's great for students yeah. and it's great yeah. for the colleges. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. so okay. is, George, you're going to start off with our usual fluff piece. Fluff and this piece. one's we'll truly with fluffy. A... Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> um, <laughs> hilarious. Watch as this cat has the perfect reaction to woke girl declaring her personal pronouns. So she's going to call the cat 
No, this isn't about the cat. It's, it's about, about what cat. she herself wants to be referred to as, she what her the, personal pronouns So she are. wants to cat. But watch the cool. cat. I don't, I don't know. But let's see what the cat thinks. <laughs> My name is Erin. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a... <laughs> Then I use she her pronouns and I am this. Hi, my name is Erin. I use she her pronouns and I am this. Well, we yep. hope she uses she her pronouns because she is a girl. And that would be yeah. good. That should be a given, but that's the kind of thing my grandma would have done. <laughs> oh. You know what? Normally I don't like cats. I know. That's why But this that could change funny. my mind. <laughs> Now we're not we're not saying there should be violence towards people that want to assert their personal pronouns, but nonetheless the cat is feeling what we're all kind of feeling like, okay, let's just get some common sense on this, right? Are you yeah. are you implying the cat understood her? <laughs> <laughs> I know there are cat lovers out there that think yeah, their yeah. cats understand them and smile at them and <laughs> all that sort of you know, people even nodding in agreement in the audience. <laughs> I can't. No, no comments on cats or dogs on here. I don't want to see them coming across, okay? Oh, I just great. Don't. Now there's going to be a battle. Personally, I think the best cats are fossilized ones. <laughs> yeah, see? Oh, you hear the oh, audience now reaction I'm in to trouble. that one. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah they were meowing out there oh, on you. You're on in that trouble, one. Ken. You're I know. I get the, I, You know, I found if you, if you talk about kids being simple little brats or something, people say, oh, yeah. If you talk about their dog or cat <laughs> being a degenerate mutant, I... Yeah, they get I much must have more to call efficient. security. <laughs> you can say whatever you want about their kids, but don't yeah. you dare denigrate their yeah. cat or dog. That's true. That's <laughs> anyway, true. Okay. domestic cats and dogs are degenerate mutants. Okay, Hi. let's go Hi. on. Rewriting evolutionary history and shape future health studies. All right, so what this has to do with is basically how our brains are connected to our eyes. And um, they humans at least have the the way it is is basically one optic nerve like so from the right eye goes to the left side of our brain and the opposite the right eye goes to the left side of the brain and um so they thought this was kind of you know more recent in evolutionary history but then Advanced. it turns out they find uh -huh. it in the gar okay which is this ancient fish that has the same sort of setup and they're like oh we have to rewrite the textbooks now because this evolved a hundred million years earlier than we thought Okay, so, so what that means is when you read the textbooks out there by the secular world, you shouldn't really trust them because they change literally mm. all the time, over and over yeah. again. Well, they do. Actually, actually, the interesting thing is because they date these garfish fossils at 100 million years ago, mm -hmm. yeah, and they say, therefore, the garfish evolved, well, way before these other fish. Mm -hmm. it's like and zebra fish. Because mm -hmm. they have a different setup. They have a different setup. And they have this set up with the, the, the two lots of nerves going mm -hmm. to the brain and so on. Right. So therefore, that evolved much earlier. Right. So they're saying... So, yeah. Okay. So, saying, so, so here's what they're saying. They're saying, let's assume evolution mm -hmm. uh, with regards to this gar uh, to argue for evolution. Do you realize that's actually an affirming the consequent fallacy? That is an arbitrary circle. That's what they've just done. Well, they're just saying that the, they're saying the gar has evolved more slowly than the zebrafish. The zebrafish has a different setup. And it says, therefore, mm -hmm. the gar are more similar to the last common ancestor shared by fish and humans, which we have now, no evidence that's all story, of. But, by the way. You know. Now, did you know that Charles Darwin called gars living fossils mm -hmm. because they forgot to evolve? Yeah. And so they, have, they look the same today right. as what they did doing the fossil records yeah. supposedly 100 million years ago. And if you want to see a living garfish, well, you're here at the Creation Museum. All yeah. you need to do is go up to the main hall and you see the waterfall mm -hmm. there and look in the water there and you'll see mm -hmm. some fish and uh, yeah. you see some turtles. turtles. But if you look carefully, there's a number of gar in there. And yeah. the reason we put them in there is because they're living fossils, and it shows you that they forgot to evolve. They did. They right. look. You, you know what's they remarkable? Garfish have always been garfish. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what's remarkable. That's why we put them in there. Yep. And they were made on day five. And they were made yeah. on day five. And guess what? A lot of them died in, during the flood. And were and fossilized. Were buried and that's why we found their fossils. 350 years ago. And, and then not, then now they misinterpret that flood sediment. But they, they even talk in the article about looking back 
you know, in yeah. time. Well, again, so looking <laughs> back in time, sure, but based on what starting assumption do you have, right? right? What's your starting point for looking back in time? Is it that these fish are 450 million years old, or is it that they were um, created on day five to 6,000 years ago, right? That's going to inform a lot of what you think about these fish because of your starting point. And see, yeah. they're really amazed because it's saying here, the more ancient fish do things differently, each eye has two nerve connections, one going to either side of the brain, which is also what humans have. Yeah. In so other words, <laughs> they're designed to do what they do, and what they do, they do well. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so it's no big deal in a creation yeah. you know, worldview for there to be some fish designed this way and other fish to be designed a, di be designed a different way. It's just what works well for those particular fish. That's how God yeah. designed those kinds. Right. And, and anything else is just a, 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 a fishy type Story. of a situation. <laughs> Bodie is known for his puns. So. That was a bad pun, right? That there. one wasn't that, particularly no. good. Yeah, that's not okay. really good. Bodie <laughs> yeah. is usually the pun master, but today it hasn't been good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. We'll see if there's some later ones. <laughs> All right. Famed atheist Richard Dawkins has Humanist of the Year Award revoked for questioning transgenderism. All right. So, <laughs> so the ideal humanist gets canceled for being a humanist. <laughs> hey, yeah. if you question it, if, even, even if you're an atheist and yeah. you question transgender, th they eat their own. Yeah, so what he basically yeah. did, he had a, I think it was a, a tweet. Yes, it was a tweet. And he said, just, I'll just read it in part. It says, um, some men choose to identify as women and some women choose to identify as men. You will be vilified if you deny they are literally are what they identify as. Disgust. Yeah. And so he, that's what he kind of put out there. So he was just saying, discuss it. And he got canceled for just saying, discuss it. You're because, not even allowed to discuss it. Well, he's yes. had other tweets, uh, especially about transgender, that show that he's like, well, this is science. Like, you're either a male or you're female. There's no other choices, right? And so it's not surprising that this is now yeah. happening to you him. You know what gets me is Richard Dawkins in the past has come out to be pro-pedophile. He has been anti-morality. He won't get canceled for those things, mm -hmm. but boy, just asking to discuss this issue, right. bang. Yeah. And he even says um, what the humanist, American Humanist Association said. They said he has a history of making statements. It's used the guise of scientific discourse to demean marginalized groups and approach antithetical to humanist values. Hmm. What, what humanist values? Right. Any values that they would have, they would have to borrow from God and his word. Yeah, everybody's right. going to have different values in a humanistic mm -hmm. worldview. So how are you, why are you saying his mm -hmm. values are wrong and yours are because right? Because the American Humanist Association, we find the whole issue of LGBT, the transgender movement and so on, is really driving the whole of our culture. Right. It's just absolutely mind-boggling to actually right. stand back and look at this. But, I mean, Dawkins knows, you know, when, you're, when uh, you were conceived genetically, I have X, Y, uh, male, or you have XX, mm -hmm. female, in the sex chromosomes. Right. And of course, uh, the American Humanist Association are, are really upset with someone like Dawkins, yeah. who, who actually does know observational science. Right, he I does. I mean, he's yeah. an atheist, but he right. does know obs observational science. So it's interesting they make uh, this statement here. His latest statement implies that... Uh, um, oh, the, R Richard Dawkins was honoured, it says, in 1996 by the American Humanist... Uh, of the year for his significant con contributions in this area. And it's regrettably, Richard Dawkins says, over the past several years, he accumulated history of making statements that use the guise of scientific discourse to demean marginalized groups um, and approach antithetical, I can't even it. say it today, humanist values. His latest statement implies that the identities of transgender individuals are fraudulent. Uh, well, they're sin. That's what they are. They're not fraudulent. Uh, they are sin. And uh, it, it's interesting, uh, Dawkins actually supported Twitter's decision to ban Trump, Donald Trump, from the platform. And he said this, is Twitter's ban of Trump a worrying free speech issue? On reflection, I think not, because Trump went far beyond expression of opinion, which should be protected to outright lies. Well, Dawkins gives outright lies. He says there's no God. That's an outright lie, yeah. because there is... God, right. and he's without excuse, and that's what the Bible says. And you know what? Richard Dawkins has attacked God for so many years, mm -hmm. so many, I mean, kind of getting, yeah. over and over again. Uh, <clears throat> Psalm 37, verses 12 and 13 says, 
The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. You know it, what? Richard Dawkins, his yeah, day's coming. He's getting, yeah. Yep. And uh, so. you know, the younger generations, of course, have been sort of trained to think in terms of feelings. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you hear them saying is, yes, but even though I'm biologically a male, I feel that I'm a female. Well, you can't trust your feelings because the heart of man is deceitful above mm -hmm. all things and desperately wicked, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we should be judging our feelings against the absolute authority of the word right. of God and be reminded what God's word says. There's no temptation overtaking you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. But really the answer comes down to God's word. So, right. you know, if you trust God and his word and trust Christ for salvation, then even if you have those temptations, right. he's going to enable you to overcome them. Because people sometimes will say, well, like even the American Psychological Association will say, well, there's genetic or biological reasons for this. And I've looked, as a geneticist, looked at a lot of those papers on that. And there is no definitive link at this time between transgenderism and some genetic factor for it. So that isn't even true either. But, you know, they want to try to excuse what they're doing as much as possible. So someone says here on YouTube, I just changed my opinion on cats. <laughs> See, I agree with them. Oh, I, mean, I mean, I was tempted to change my here. opinion of cats. <laughs> okay. Next. Okay. Planned Parenthood CEO says the organization is done making excuses for founder Margaret Sanger's racist views. All right. So here's another person that's going to be canceled, and that is Margaret Sanger. So she did have very racist and um, views and very what we call eugenicist. She was a eugenicist. So eugenicist eugenics means um, good in birth or well born. And so she didn't think people mm -hmm. with deformities or people um, that were of races other than the Caucasian should be allowed to propagate basically to have children. And she was very, very clear in that. And yet they've always stood behind her, but now they can't do it any okay, longer, can, you know? Okay. Let me try to understand. I'm trying to understand this. Okay. So Margaret Sanger, and I've got some quotes here of mm -hmm. her and I can mm -hmm. show you. She had racist views, yep. eugenicist. Uh, she wanted people forcibly sterilized yep. that she believed were lower on the mental scale because yep. they're yep. closer to the apes mm -hmm. because she believed in evolution. I've read a lot of her stuff. Uh, so Absolutely. all of that. She founded Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. which today their whole worldview is really based on Margaret Sanger's beliefs they and say ideas. That. Yeah. So they, they now are to the stage where they'll cancel Margaret Sanger, but mm -hmm. not Planned Parenthood. Yep. So it's all show and it's- It, it is show. Yeah, Just, because yeah. even in the article, they talk about how 79% of Planned Parenthood's abortion facilities are located within walking distance of um, African-American or black neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So they're still doing it. They're just not going to claim they're doing it. So let me it. remind people of something. So, in Charles Darwin's Descent of Man, he made this statement, at some future period, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races. The break between man and his nearest allies will then be wider. Then the Caucasian and some ape as low as a baboon instead of as now be between the Negro, Australian, Aboriginal, and the gorilla. In other words, Darwin was saying that um, the Australian Aboriginal people and others from Africa are closer to the ape-like creatures, whereas those with light skin are further away and they're more evolutionary advanced. And actually, uh, as you read through what he's saying there, those that are closer to the apes are lower mentality, uh, and, and on the mental mm -hmm. scale, and, yeah. and the others are more advanced. I mean, think about that for fueling racism. Da Why isn't Darwin being cancelled, by the way? Somebody you know, asked and then, that. Question, yeah. <laughs> and then you, uh, then you read what Margaret Sanger said, the practice of birth control raises us to a higher stage in the evolution of life. As each individual progresses, he helps to raise the human race in its evolution forward and onward to higher plane. Sort of sounds like Hitler to me, who wanted the superior Aryan similar, race. Yeah. And, didn't Hitler hit, based a yeah, lot he, he of his stuff off too. of this, yeah. Yeah, both of them are based on Darwin's views here. Mm -hmm. uh, Margaret Sanger said the most merciful thing that the large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. And in fact, if you've never heard Margaret Sanger, listen to this. She was a very evil woman. Do you believe in sin? When I say believe, I don't mean in believe in committing sin. Do you believe there is such a thing as, a, as sin? Well, I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world that have mm, diseased from their parents that have no chance in the world to be a human being, practically. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mock when they're born. 
that to me is the greatest sin that people can, can commit. See, Margaret Sanger believed if people had what she called a defect, they shouldn't be allowed to reproduce. And if, if, if you're going to have uh, babies mm -hmm. as defects, what she would call having defects, yeah. that you should abort them and so on. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Margaret Sanger had an, a massive defect. It was called sin. Mm -hmm. And you know what the judgment for sin is? Death. And she has suffered that judgment. But if she didn't yeah. trust Christ for salvation, then yeah. she will spend eternity um, separated from God. It's yeah. interesting, another statement from Margaret Sanger. Moreover, when we realize that each feeble-minded person is a potential source of endless progeny of defect, we prefer the policy of immediate sterilization of making sure that parenthood is absolutely prohibited to the feeble-minded. And actually, uh, because she believed in evolution and that certain types of people were closer to the apes than others, they're the ones that she thought should be forcibly sterilized yep. mm -hmm. and babies aborted so that you didn't produce yeah. these mentally deficient people as she yeah. would think of them instead of the more advanced. People think right. about it. That's the whole foundation of Planned Parenthood. That's what it's all about. Yeah, that's why Planned Parenthood needs to be canceled. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that's the good question. When are they going to stop making excuses for Johnson's uh, anti-baby views here, you know, yeah. the CEO? Yeah. I mean, that's what we keep seeing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Hey, someone from uh, Logan Home, Australia watching here. We have people from all over the world who watch this. I've got Finland and England on here, so. Hey, yeah. we have a book. Um, Ken, this was actually a book that you did, Will They Stand, that really does tackle... Uh, dealing with a lot of these issues in today's culture, particularly with regards to raising children of the next generation. Because let's face it, that's a big question that we have. How, how do you raise kids uh, in this ungodly world? How do we raise godly generations? And you know, a lot of parents, a lot of grandparents uh, struggle with that nowadays, especially the way things are changing. So this book, Will They Stand, I think will be a really powerful yeah, resource that's, for you. That's um, the newest book that mm -hmm. I've done there. And it's a very personal book because it's really my testimony yeah. and how our parents trained us, yeah, and then start. how the whole Ministry of Answers in Genesis started, the Creation Museum, the Ark Encounter, mm -hmm. about our own children, about, yeah. uh, have some funny stories about our children. In fact, one of them's married to Bodie, <laughs> our, yep. our daughter Renee, and I delivered her on the lounge at the front of our house <laughs> because she decided not to wait. Yep, she and was ready the to come didn't into the arrive world. in time. And she's and, still uh, like that. When she wants to do something, she's gonna go do I it. I know, I was totally <laughs> terrified. What do you do? And then suddenly I got this baby and I thought, what do you do? And I thought, I remember seeing on the movies what they did. So I hung her up by her feet and slapped her on the bottom and she cried and it worked. And I thought, wow, the movies are right. It works. So Don't anyway. Don't trust the movies today though, guys. You have to yeah. be careful. But I go through uh, all of that in there. And uh, yeah. in regard to what the Bible says about roles of mother and father and about raising children and the biblical mm -hmm. principles and so on. Actually, Bodhi's wife Someone has a chapter here, at the end of the book on biblical worldview. Yeah, someone says, great book. I'm almost finished reading it now. Yeah, I've, I've had some rave reviews yeah. over that, that particular book. So. Yeah. Okay, so this next article is kind of a follow-up on the previous one. CDC reports 117,626 black children aborted in one year, more than a third of total abortions in the U.S. And so the reason, um, so if you look at it, there's been over 600,000 abortions in 2018. And basically, um, for black children, it was 33.6% of those. Now, it was more for white children, but when you consider that they said the, um, the uh, black people make up less than 14% of the total population of the U.S., that's a significant number then, right. um, disproportionate. And they even said that the rates of abortion for um, uh, non-Hispanic black women are 21.2 abortions per 1,000 women. Wow. But, yeah, and, and that, again, is a product of Margaret Sanger. It is. And mm -hmm. her philosophy. In fact, somebody said on here, yeah, they want to cancel people, but not the ideas. Right, right. exactly. You know, cancel exactly. the person of Margaret Sanger, but not her ideas that uh, work through Planned Parenthood. And by talking about black women and white women right. here in this article, we're using their terms because right. as we teach uh, in the talks right. we give on one, bla one blood, one race, that nobody's black and nobody's white. We're all right. brown, we're all shades of brown. But yeah. Some are use, more brown, some are less But we're brown. using their terminology from their papers. Right, there's one race, the human race. Um, you know, I look at this and I think, wow, you know, that's, that's a lot of abortions in the United States. But, you know, if you look worldwide, there are between 40 and 50 million abortions per year. And that's, that's just shocking if you think about that. Now, I want you to understand, there are 195 countries in the world. 
only 29 of them have more than 50 million people. So just imagine like an entire country yeah. like Spain or the Ukraine or Canada or Poland or Peru, any one of those countries every year, mm -hmm. if you wiped out every single person in that country, that's what abortion really is doing and, worldwide. And, and you know the sad thing, when you look at all the COVID lockdowns and so on that occurred and you have these governors like the Kentucky governor or the governor of California and so on saying they want to protect mm -hmm. life and stop people from dying. Well, number one, you're not going to stop people from dying. Everyone's going to die, <laughs> right? right? And I'm not saying you shouldn't look after your health, but oh, right, right, some yeah. of their statements are so inconsistent because they shut down churches and because they're non-essential, yet what are essential to them are abortion clinics. Mm -hmm. There are more children killed by abortion in Kentucky every day than, uh, than what is claimed died from COVID. Yeah. And well, and the thing is too, like the churches yeah. are essential in the sense that they are providing hopefully help and care for these women right. that do, that are having children, that do have unexpected yeah. pregnancies and all that. They could be, they should be the ones helping these people and caring for these people. And yet they're considered non-essential, but it's okay to kill your baby. That's, that's considered essential. It, it's just. It, yeah. There's so much hypocrisy yeah. when it comes yeah. to there all really this is. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know why people should have stood up against a lot of this hypocrisy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Matthew 5.21 says, You have heard it said of old, you shall not murder. And whoever murders will be liable to judgment. Yep, that's true. Oh. All right, Tyrannosaurs may have hunted together in packs like wolves. All right, so they basically found um, a whole group of dinosaurs in the late Cretaceous period, which is um, flood sediment. And um, they said, well... Because we found them all together, it's obvious they hung out in cohesive groups and they hunted in packs. That would be like someone <laughs> finding a human graveyard saying, look, they all hunted together and gathered <laughs> grapes together. They're all buried together. Uh, no, it just yeah, means they're, they're buried, buried together. together. It doesn't mean they hunted together. This, this, this scientist said she found that they died together in a single catastrophic event, a flood. She got it right. That's right. I agree. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but... Do you know what they say? Look, they we, found, say we found point. these animals died in a flood here, and 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 a flood here. There's all these local floods all over the world. How about one major catastrophic global flood? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, they reject it. that because it's in the right. Bible. You know, if the global flood wasn't in the Bible, they'd probably say, this is part of a global flood. Yeah, they probably <laughs> because it's in the Bible, yeah. they say, there never was a global flood. I mean, whatever's in the Bible, they would reject. Mm -hmm. It makes know? a lot more sense that these creatures were trying to flee to right. higher ground. Yeah. And guess what? You get less and less of that, and that's mm -hmm. where they're buried. And when they can't go any further, and finally the, the flood sediment overtakes them and buries them. Uh, you know, okay. that, that, that's how you make a fossil is r rapid catastrophic burial. So, seals out the oxygen. So right. David from Australia says, imagination hunting. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I, it's I amazing. put that imaginary time in here, yep. Right, from the fossils, what they think, what they can come up with, basically, as a result of just finding now, a bunch of fossils. Now, you forever. think that is something. Well, you get oh, to this next article. Yeah. yeah, okay, how many T Rexes were there? Billions, okay? So basically, you know, it's kind of hard to figure out how large extinct populations of animals were because obviously they're not living anymore. So how do you decide right. that from the fossil record? So they, and we're not, I'm not going to go into the whole complicated thing, but they basically figured out a way to do that. And they came up with the fact that they're over the course of their, um, the, the span that in which T-Rexes were alive, which is like 20 some million years, according to them, there must have been at some point uh, over that span, 2.5 billion T-Rexes and at any one time, probably 20,000 adult T. Rexes were living. So where are all the fossils? Because I looked That's up here. They so they're claiming That's the question. they're claiming that it that there were probably 2.5 billion T. Rexes that lived on this earth at some point. And if you look up how many fossils have they found of relatively well-preserved post-juvenile T. Rexes, 32. Right, plus yeah. these new ones and that we're likely just found here. the rest, up to 100 total, but the rest of them mostly by one bone. Yeah, like a single bone or a juvenile. Like, like one of the famous T-Rexes, Sue, mm -hmm. uh, that had stomach contents. It had eaten another little juvenile T-Rex. Yeah. So they were eating their own. But you would think, like, if you've had, t in all these local floods, I mean, certainly, with two and a half billion T-Rexes, you should have a lot more fossils yeah, where are than what they? we're yeah. finding. Yeah, where right. are all the fossils? But not only that, while you hear this, this is science at its best. This is evolutionary science at its best. They say that 2.5 billion T-Rexes must have lived during the 20 million years, but 
they said they could be they could be out by a little bit and they said the range actually depends on certain numbers and things it could have been as few as 140 million and as many as 42 billion hmm. that's not different that's, that's not that much different range. to 2.5 billion you that, just the whole that's thing. a sign they really don't know <laughs> It's just based off a whole series of assumptions. I mean, mm -hmm. a ton of assumptions. And if any one of those assumptions is wrong, that number could be dropped. And they are wrong different. because we know that yeah. these these T Rexes were buried. Uh, at least what we're finding, those 32 plus, uh, were buried in the flood about 4,350 so, right. years ago. So of course their numbers are off mm -hmm. right off the bat from so that. So somebody said here, how can they be so sure they weren't even there. It's interesting. <laughs> I, when I do a kids program, I often teach there? them on the basis of Job 38 verse <laughs> yeah. 19, you know, where God asked, where were yeah. you when I laid the foundations of the earth? And I teach kids to ask, next time somebody says millions of years, just ask, were you there? Were right. you there? And of course, I have kids come back to me and say, the evolutionists said, no, they weren't, but you weren't either. What do we say now? I say, oh, that's easy. You say, no, I wasn't there, but I know someone who was, and I have his oh, word. Yeah. Are you interested? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a really good book. Uh, this is Dr. Tim Kaleri's book. He's a geologist. He's got a, a book here called Dinosaurs, Marvels of, De of God's Design. And it is a beautiful book. It's, uh, you know, it's got a lot of facts and figures and things like that uh, on dinosaurs, a lot about fossils, uh, a lot about looking at dinosaurs from a biblical worldview. And there's a number of different resources on dinosaurs that, that we sell. But I wanted to highlight this one today. Uh, Dr. Clary, I think, does an excellent job in here. Uh, of going uh, through a lot of uh, aspects of dinosaurs. So. We, we've got to do this last we've one. Got to do okay, this last we've one. got to do All this right. last one. Within minutes, I was weeping. The U.S. pastor using scripture to mobilize climate action. Okay, first of all, I'm not sure he's using scripture. But anyway, yeah, this is the Reverend Scott Hardin Neary of the First Christian Church in Black Mountain, North Carolina. So he's all about you know, uh, climate change and how it's a terrible thing and we need to do something about it. It even says he revisits the story, story, not history. He says but story of, multiple times. Of Noah's Ark. And he says it's principally a story about human suffering amid widespread ecological devastation. Uh, you know, uh, I, no. I know he, it doesn't he obviously like hasn't read Genesis 6 no. through 9. Because yeah. it's not about human suffering and ecological disaster. It's about human wickedness. Yeah. Right. And, and, judgment. Judgment. and from Scripture, it seems God, God was patient for 120 years. Uh -huh. Your days are going to be 120 mm -hmm. years. And in the long suffering of Noah, it actually says that in Peter, the long yeah. suffering mm -hmm. uh, of uh, God, I should say, the long right. suffering of God in Noah's day. Uh, and then the judgment came because of wickedness. Mm -hmm. But see, it's all this emphasis on climate change. And the, these people that look, you know what I found with a lot of young people today? Whenever you have a drought or you have a flood or there's a hurricane, it's climate change. It's climate change. Because they don't understand that these things have happened in the past and in many uh, instances been worse in the past. You know, I grew up in Australia and one of the favourite poems uh, that we had to learn at school was by Dorothy McCulloch called My Country. And she lived in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. In 1906, I think it was, she wrote this famous poem and just... This one verse here, because we all, all learnt this. I love a sunburned country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her uh, far horizons. I love her jewel sea, her beauty and her terror. And it, it talked about other aspects of that uh, in the poem. The point is, there's been lots of droughts and mm -hmm. flooding rains in Australia in the past, and some even worse than what they've had in recent times. But the younger generations, they're not taught that. Mm -hmm. They're right. not taught their history. And they're, they're taught so about they main think cause. everything is because of climate change. Yeah. Right. Even some of the hurricanes that have hit in America, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have people living in those areas right. generations ago. And so the devastation wasn't as bad, but some of the hurricanes were even worse. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, you know, there's a good aspect to recycling, you know, making sure that the environment is kept clean. You know, don't just go out there and trash national forests. Right. And so, you know, we, we want to see it taken care of, but you got to have a balance about all this. You know, God did create the world and gave us dominion over it. Uh, if people want to have a good balanced approach to it, a good biblical approach, I would suggest you go to the Cornwall Alliance. It's ran, run by a friend of ours, uh, Dr. Cal Beisner and uh, does a lot of excellent work uh, looking at uh, environmental issues from a biblical viewpoint. But. So, Georgia, tell me, when I read this, they actually have grief counseling over climate change. Eco-grief. 
um, like conversations or Eco whatever. Eco-grief meetings yeah, with counseling. Yeah, these people are so traumatized by the climate change that's going on that they need a place, a safe place to express their grief over it. And, and you know, you even, as you read throughout this, I mean, too, one of the things that, that one of the pastors, and I use that term loosely, was going around handing light bulbs out to people to try to help, LED light bulbs, of course, to help with all of this, you know, your energy bills. And I'm thinking, you know, what, what about telling them about the gospel of yeah, Jesus Yeah, tell them about the Christ? light of the world. I, you know, yeah. I mean, so you lower your energy bill, but you spend forever in hell. I mean, let's think about this for a minute, you know? Yeah. And they're not doing what the church is called to do, but just spread the gospel. Now, this reverend, yeah. it also says he lives with his partner. So that sounds yeah, unbiblical, who right? Means. Who knows what that means? Here's what he said. We go around and we say to people, we care about you. We care about the earth. We want to help you lower your energy bill. <laughs> Here's you know, a light bulb. <laughs> can you imagine? We built a creation museum in Ark because we, want to, we care about people and want to help them lower their energy bills. No, we care about people and we want them to know God's word is true and we're sinners and we need salvation. Yeah. That's why, that's why Th we do it. There's got to be a joke in here about how many people it takes to change a light bulb. <laughs> and well, that note. You know how many psychologists it takes to change a light bulb? <laughs> Tell me. Only one, but it has to really want to change. <laughs> okay. okay. So. <laughs> well, that's all we have for today. So we'll guys. see you back on Wednesday. <laughs>